This week I'm in India, my favourite country. I've come here to help end an old but brutal tradition. This is a dancing bear, a once wild animal, subdued, beaten, mutilated and humiliated. Now a novelty at weddings or a cheap snap for tourists. This village is a few miles from the city of Agra and the world famous Taj Mahal. All of the bears here were captured from the wild when they were tiny cubs just a few weeks old. So this custom is not only taking a terrible toll on the lives of each of these magnificent animals, it's threatening the very survival of the sloth bear in the wild. I've come to meet Kartik Sachinarayan, a biologist and campaigner who is determined to end the trait. Kartik co-founded the charity Wildlife SOS, which in 2002 opened this rescue centre. Most of the bears here have been handed over voluntarily by their owners, and in return, Wildlife SOS has helped the calendars with grants and training to find new jobs. But the programme will only work if Kartik can stop more cubs being taken out of the wild and sold into the dancing bear trade. We meet up in Hubli, a city in the mid-southern state of Karnataka. Kartik has established a network of undercover agents to track down wildlife dealers trading in bear cubs. His agent in Hubli, known as Number 5, is closing in on a target. We will let Number 5 go inside, negotiate with them, and tell the woman who holds the cubs that there is this white man that I have who will be able to pay you a lot of money. He's looking for some cups for his uncle's circus in Russia or some place like that. It's almost nightfall by the time we reach the location. Our aim is to verify the information so we can set up a police raid. I go in with number five. As we discuss the deal, the trader is rocking her grandchild in a sling. It doesn't make the job easy. I'm thinking, this woman is going to end up in jail. But I'm sticking to my role, buying cubs for a circus. It will be 40,000 for the two bears, yes. plus the cost of the delivery and the food for four people. Yeah. The next morning, we assess the situation. This is the woman. Yeah. She's called Bibi Jan, and uh, we've been on her trail now for over six weeks. You may just go underground with the six. Kartik decides we need to wait and let number five keep an eye on the gang till the rest of the cubs turn up. We travel on to a wildlife reserve in the north of the state where a healthy population of sloth bears survive. Sloth bears live only on the Indian subcontinent, stretching down from Nepal and Pakistan and over to the island of Sri Lanka. There's another one behind him as well. There are two of them. Fantastic. Wildlife SOS estimate that less than 10,000 survive and that more than 200 cubs are captured each year in India alone. Kartik is struck dumb by this experience. His dream is that one day he could reintroduce rescued bear cubs to a wild reserve like this. A week later, we're back in Hubli at the police commissioner's office. More information has come in on the cubs, and a plan is set to make arrests that night. Number five has uncovered a second ring of traders. He's convinced them to bring the cubs to a hotel to make the exchange. It's midnight. You're on the way. Two minutes, the cops should be here. How many are coming? I think about four people, three or four people, all in plain clothes. Although he's operating in an entirely unofficial capacity, Kartik takes charge of the team. As they move in, number five fakes an escape to protect his cover for the future. Inside there are three men and three tiny cubs. 
Bet įmėlėti. The arrests are made swiftly and unceremoniously. I sense that this is the moment that Kartik works for more than anything else. The heart is racing. They're all really highly stressed. We just need to calm them down now. It's it's quite young. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's uh, it's barely about uh, six weeks old. It's not older than five or six weeks old. And uh, poor thing is really stressed. The following morning, the grandmother and her two sons are picked up at a roadblock. The two cubs I was shown the week before are recovered. Wildlife SOS vet Dr. Jadav arrives to take charge of the cubs. This is I'm giving vitamin supplements to this bear cub. And it is uh, right now it is suffering from uh, very severe dehydration. It has got a respiratory problem as well. How hopeful are you that it will uh, survive? I feel confident that you know, this we can make them survive. But their ordeal is not over yet. It's 24 hours by road and aeroplane to the rescue centre near Agra. They're a bit startled, uh, a bit scared, terrified, but uh, we're all in one piece. A further week has passed. Geeta Shishmani is the co-founder of Wildlife SOS. In the week that the cubs have been with us, they've put on almost 50% more weight. They came to us about one and a half kgs and they're about three kilos now. They're much tinier than the cubs we had last year. Good bear. They can be a very good baby. Outside, I joined Kartik to check on a group of cubs we rescued last year. So what's the objective of this? The objective is to encourage uh, foraging behaviour in the cubs, so they have to struggle and work to uh, find their food, get their food, recover their food. Get the fruits, get the fruits, there's fruits. Lots of fruits. These are the one-year-old cubs from last year's seizures. See how big they've grown. Are they going to get those ones right? Yes, they will eventually. When they've finished everything else and exhausted all the other fruits, they'll have no choice but to climb up, and that's what will keep them busy. Exactly a year ago, one of these unruly bears was pulled crying from a sack and offered to me for $1,000. Now, after the past month's work, five more cubs have been saved, and seven more wildlife dealers are facing prosecution.